Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got my 22 Lowrider ST up on the lift today. And what we're gonna do is put in a new fork cartridge system. That was not as graceful as I'd hoped it would be. Let's redo that. Come in five, four, three. Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got my 22 Lowrider ST up on the lift today. What we're gonna do is install this B-Tubo cartridge kit. This is a really cool setup from B-Tubo. It's fully adjustable, replaces all the internals inside the stock forks. Now you can do this. Uh, it does require some special tools, which I personally hate buying, and there's probably some way you can get around it, but I'm not gonna risk damaging the threads on the inside of the fork. So. I got the special tool, got this one uh, online. It's a Jim's one, Jim's 5831. You can also get the Harley one. I'll put the link in the description so you can find it there for the specialty tool. There might be some other people make it out there. I didn't get one for free. Jim's, if you want to sponsor me, I'm your guy. So from here, uh, we're gonna move over the motorcycle. There's a couple things you're gonna to wanna to know. You're gonna to wanna to have the bike up on the lift have it up high enough that you can get the front wheel off and stable enough that you can take the front forks off. Other than that, you're gonna need a good workspace to do this. Beware, fork oil's coming out of this sucker. You don't want it to land in your boots. Uh, and then you wanna measure the amount of fork oil that goes back in it after you put all the internals in. You can do this, I believe in you. Okay, now the service manual will tell you to just remove the fork tubes, but I'm gonna give you a piece of advice here. Don't do that just yet. You're going to take a T45 Torx bit and just loosen the top clamp. You can take it back until it's well relaxed off of there. And do this to both sides. Now from here what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the cap on the forks. We do this now instead of in the fork vise because sometimes these caps are really hard to get free and nothing holds them quite as tight as the clamps on the forks. However, we loosen the top one up, that way the clamp isn't pinching on the threads anywhere. So we'll take our three quarter inch Allen again. Let our handlebars turn to the stop and just crank those back, maybe about one full rotation. You know, we wanna take them off all the way. Just break them free. Same with the other side. Lower fork clamp removal. These also take a T45 Torx bit. Hopefully you can see that right there. And just break those free. As you do this, hold on to the fork tube. Because it might, it might want to slide out of the triple trees. That won't do the end of your forks any good. There, and gravity's taking over. So we're just gonna slide that fork tube right on out of there. Set that in a very safe location. So first thing we're gonna do with the left side fork here is I have it clamped in the vise and I have some rubber matting on there so I don't damage the outer shell. And it takes a six millimeter Allen to undo the drain plug slash screw that holds the valve body in. Normally I discourage people from using impacts, but this is a point where you kind of want to use the impact, not because the screw is tight, but because you want the speed to zip it out of there. And you do this now when the top clamp is still on the fork, that way the fork spring and everything holds the valve body in place. So put your impact on nice low setting, lower than that, and put her up in there. Should be able to zip that bolt right on out of there. That simple. Now from there, I'm going to pick the fork up and drain the oil into a pan that I have on the floor. I cannot tell you how many times I've done this and end up with fork oil in my shoes, so be careful. So compress the fork down, get all the oil out of it. 
even cycle it a couple times because even when you think you have all the fork oil out of this, there's still some in there waiting to find its way into your boots. Down inside there, there's still a copper washer. This is the ceiling washer, and you're going to want to get a new one of these. That goes underneath the head of the bolt. Make sure you locate that. I'm going to hold on to the main body of the fork here, and I should be able to just lefty-loosey this cap right off the top. The other fork, it's under pressure. And when you pull this out, you're going to take the whole valve body out with it. But remember, there's fork oil on this too. Also waiting just to get into your boot. And you're probably going to need that washer. Okay. Set your valve body down. Now you can stand this up. Whoop. And of course, more fork oil comes out. But there's your old spring. Set that in location with some oil dry. And from there, should be able to turn your fork over, have that washer fall out of there, and hopefully get the last bit of fork oil right up out of this sucker. All right. Now, set this fork off to the side somewhere. So I have the new piece set up here in the spring compressor. Uh, I just dropped the spring on over the top of the valve body. Now there's a spacer that goes on the top, and then you can thread the cap down on here. Now, if you don't have a spring compressor, honestly, there's not a lot of force on here. You could probably get an assistant to give you a hand with it and just squeeze the thing on down there. But basically what we're doing is we're twisting this down enough to thread this cap down on here. We're going to thread this all the way down until it stops. Now we're going to have to take the spring back off later to fill the fork oil. I'm putting it on now, that way the spring will hold the valve body in place when I put the screw in through the bottom of the fork. Then we can remove it from the spring compressor and reinstall it in the fork. Now for fork reassembly. You have your whole assembly right here. You can just slide this sucker right back inside the fork there like so. Make sure you grab the bottom of it. Before you start, make sure you have the bolt that goes in the bottom of it and the washer on hand. Otherwise, you have to look for it. Take your bolt that goes in the bottom. Put your new copper washer on there. Take some medium strength thread locker. Just put a wee little boop on there. It's like we're almost out of thread locker. I didn't call out the color because colors sometimes vary by brand. So medium strength. That's what we're really after here. Now from there, find your Allen socket that you just had in your hand. Take that, slide it up in there from the bottom, up into the bottom of the um, valve body for the fork. Thread that sucker up in there until it stops. And from there, you can torque that bolt to spec. This fork cartridge screw, uh, you're going to clamp that to 11 to 18 foot-pounds. Now we have the other fork here in the vise. So we have our fork clamped in our vise, not too tight, but enough I can push in on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in on this as I back this off. Pushing in is very important. It's going to hold tension against the spring and keep it from shooting out. And as we pull it out, the fork oil drains out hopefully into your catch pan.
From there, we'll start sliding her on out of there. Be mindful of your oil, because you know what's going to happen next. So as that drains, a little rubber stopper right there. As it drains, you can take a 17 millimeter wrench and put it onto this locking nut right there. Then you can take your three quarter inch Allen and break this free. Woo! Spin that cap right up off of there. Set this in a safe location. Uh, we're not reusing it, but maybe it'll make cool workbench art. Set the nut in a safe location. Take the rubber washer off of there. So you'll find out, like right here, it stops. Boop. Move in for a closer look. Okay. So you see right here, there's this, looks like a little castle nut, almost looks like a chess piece. Okay, so what that is, that is holding the whole valve assembly down in there. And there's a spring underneath that. Now, you probably could take a hammer and punch and wedge the thing, drive the thing out of there. But you're going to damage that nut, and God forbid you damage the threads on the inside of this fork, you're buying a new fork. So this is where the special tool comes in. It has little notches on it. Slide her down in there. Then hopefully, you should be able to put a wrench on here and lefty loosey this off of here. Now keep in mind, as you do that, you're going to have to hold the other end of the fork. Matter of fact, we're just going to move it in the vise to hold it all in place. So now you can see this whole thing here. You also see, I still have more fork oil dripping out of there. Crap. Again, it's fork oil. There's more of it in there than you ever think there is. Ooh, that was close. So, I've got the fork in the vise here. I'm holding on to the bottom mount that the wheel actually attaches to. Uh, or the inner fork. I'm going to take the special tool, slide it up on here. I'm going to get a wrench for that. On this special tool, it's a 7 8 Should be able to grab that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Took a little persuading with the impact. Make sure it's securely in our vise. I don't know if there's spring tension on this. So we're going to push in on it as we lefty loosey this thing on out of here. go. Just a wee little bit of spring tension there. So we're going to take these pieces off. Again, fork oil going everywhere. There's a pattern. Holy crap, it's really going everywhere. Ugh. There's always more fork oil. You can take this spacer out of there too. Get some more racks. Cool. Now that you have the internals out of there. We're going to take this thing out of the vise. We're going to tip it up. There's the spring. There's the spring. There's the rest of the fork oil. Let that trash drain. Set it in a nice safe location. Probably on an absorbent pad. Now the next step in order to install this is we have to remove this lower lug from the fork tube. This may seem daunting, but it's really not that big a deal. All you really have to do is put some heat into the bottom of this thing with a heat gun. That'll help cook any Loctite or thread sealing out of there. And then we can, I bought a shaft collar here. This is a 43 millimeter shaft collar or inch and 11 sixteenths. And I can clamp this on there, and then I can take my trusty pipe wrench there, clamp it on, or grab the shaft collar, that way I don't tear up the fork tube, and unscrew it right on out of there. 
It may seem a little intimidating to take this off, but I promise you it's really not that big a deal once you get started. So, first thing we're going to do, put our shaft collar up and on here. And when you tighten this shaft collar up, tighten snot out of it. Because it needs to grab that thing, grab the fork tube. And uh, if you damage the threads a little bit on the shaft collar, it's okay. As long as you don't strip it out this time. So that's good and tight. Now, going to take our heat gun, put some heat into it. Now, we're going to take our heat gun, put some heat into it, and this, we're going to let it heat up for a while, because this is a big aluminum piece, there's a lot of metal here, the vise also is going to dissipate some of the heat, so it's going to take it a while. Now, we aren't trying to burn the paint off of this thing or anything, but we want to get it pretty good and hot. Hot enough you can't even touch it for a quick second. That's pretty good and hot. You could also use a temperature gun. If you're using a temperature gun, get up to about high 180 or so. Now from there, take your trusty pipe wrench. Grab that shaft collar. And hold on to your fork tube and pull. There we go. Whew. It will not be loose. All right. Once it breaks free, should be able to just spin this out of here by hand. There's a lot of threads in here. It's going to take a while. All righty. Now down inside here, there's an O-ring and a spacer. We're going to pick that O-ring right up on out of there. And then once it cools off, which is not that cool yet, we can loosen it up, turn it over, and there's that spacer it has got to come out of there. Now, we can go down inside this thing with a small wire wheel on Dremel, Clean all that old thread locker out of there. Take some solvent, clean everything else out of there. Clean up real good, because there's no only dirt and contaminants. Then we'll be ready for reinstallation. Oh, reinstall the O-ring. Then we'll be ready for reinstallation. Now we're ready to put the new cartridge inside the fork. In case you're wondering, I have these zip ties on here just to hold the fork slider up in the air. Other than that, they serve no purpose. From here, we can take our new cartridge with the O-ring on the bottom of it, slide it all the way up in here. Whoa, crap. We're gonna twist and push and slide her all the way up in there until she stops. There we go. Now from there, we're gonna take our medium strength oil resistant thread locker often known as number 243. We're going to put this stuff on here. Normally I tell people you don't need to use a lot of thread locker, but this is a big diameter. So we're going to put her on there and smear her all around real good. Make sure you got a good coating of that on there. Now, I already put the O-ring back in there. I did not put the spacer back in there because this flange on the bottom right here that takes up the gap that was the spacer. So, if it won't fit, put some heat back into the bottom lug. Slide this down in here. 
spinner on down in tight. Now we're going to put our shaft collar back on. Honestly, we could have left it on there. And make sure you leave a little gap here. Uh, that way the fork has room to tighten up. But I try to put it as low as possible. That way, if it somehow or another scratches the fork, it's not in an area that the fork seal rides on. So it won't trash the fork. Fork seal. Won't trash fork seal. Any day now, this will tighten up. All right. Now there's no real spec to this, uh, so we're just gonna tighten her up. Use your own judgment, go off feel. Remember how much force it took to get it loose. <clears throat> Use about that much force to put it back on there. Actually, I feel like I wanna give it a bump more than that, so. Okay, now we're gonna take the shaft collar off Cut our zip ties off, let the slider fall down, and then we'll be ready to put this whole assembly back onto the bike, and then add the fork oil and put the caps on. Okay, now we're gonna add the fork oil. Now, B2Bo gives a measurement, and they want this 70 millimeters below the top, or two and three quarter inches. So I don't actually know how much this is gonna take, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna fill it up a bunch, and then I'm gonna have to take this uh, dampening rod here and pump it up and down to bleed it out. So basically I'm going to overfill it because then I have this suction tool here that I can set down into here and I have this set at that exact measurement and then it has like a little draw tube on here so once it gets bled out and it's over full I can take this draw it out if it doesn't stick. There we go. Then I can lift up on this plunger and it will draw the additional oil up into here. Therefore, giving me the exact right amount of oil in there. And with forks, it's very important to have the right amount of oil in there. So, first things first, add some fork oil. Look down in there, make sure you don't overfill it. Push this down in, let it spring back up. We're gonna do this over and over. Until it, the fork oil doesn't seem to drop down anymore. add more fork oil. go so we just drew a little bit out now we know it's at the right height set this off to the side on a rag now we're ready to put the spring on compress the spring and install the cap now we reinstall the spring down on here make sure it's seated down put spacer on top 
take our jack. There we are. Carefully, you don't accidentally lift the fork tube up and And you can take your fork spring compressor, or if you have a friend, you can probably just lean on this thing. Now that that's all compressed down, you can thread your fork cap on here. Get that a ways down, and you can take your... From there, you can lock this jam nut down onto the cap. <sighs> Remove your spring pressure and you can thread your cap right down onto your fork. Repeat the same process for the other fork. Now everyone's favorite part, reinstalling the fork tubes. <clears throat> Have your socket wrench and everything, all your tools ready. Then take your forks, slide them right on up in there. And set it to, you want the top of the fork tube Basically right, you have the top of the sh same shaft diameter part of the fork tube, or the straight part of the fork tube. You want that to be right at the top of your clamp. There is a little tapered piece on the, a little tapered section on the top of the fork tube. You want that to stick up. Once you get her up in there, take your ratchet. Oh, come on. Tighten up one of the bolts. We'll torque them in a minute. There you go. Notice I didn't tighten up the top one yet because I still have to torque the clamp on the top of the fork, which we are going to do now. This top cap is gonna get torqued down to 13 to 16 foot pounds. All right. Now those are in there. We can torque all these. Now the fork pinch bolts are about 36 foot pounds for all four. And that side is installed. Now, move over to the other side, put the other fork tube on. Okay, so setting the suspension. Uh, if you turn this whole outer knob, that is the preload, and B-Tubo gives you a little tool here to go on there, and then you can take a wrench and click it down in. Same with the preload on the left fork. Uh, and it takes a four millimeter Allen wrench to actually do the adjustments in here. Now, they don't give you settings, you kind of got to figure it out. So it has a range of zero to 20 clicks. So I'm just going to go five clicks in on each one of these, and then we're going to take it for a ride, and we'll fine tune in from there. 
All right, so just got back from a test ride. This thing rides really great. Ended up going another click on the compression, a few more on the rebound. Uh, so that's about three on compression and about five clicks on the rebound. That's where we're sitting at right now. Seems to be a pretty solid setup. Could possibly be a little better, but that's all I can really tell in the city. Later on, I'll get down to Southeast Ohio, where all the awesome curvy roads are around here, and I'll be able to really fine tune it in. So I might even do a video recap once I get all that done. So keep an eye on my social media. So this is really a five-star product from B-Tubo. I'm really impressed with this thing. Not that I had any doubts, but man, you've got your preload adjustment, you've got your compression dampening, you've got your rebound dampening, or whatever the term for dampening is for compression and rebound. Uh, but you've got all that stuff. It's a really cool, full tunable fork setup. So I could even adjust it for highway ripping versus, you know, ripping around the curvy roads and stuff. So. I highly recommend this if you really want to make your ST or Lowrider S or the other ones that Harley used the suspension on, including the XR1200. Uh, if you really want to make those handle as they should have from the factory, definitely check out that B2Bo kit. There's a link to it in the description below. So that's all I have for you. Thank you. Like and subscribe. All that jazz.